We are here, we are uh, at E3 at PlayStation's booth, and we are joined by Paul Rostchinsky, Game Director of Drive Club. Thanks for joining us, Paul. No, thanks, it's great to be here. So, uh, you guys just had an announcement this morning. You uh, introduced the weather system in Drive Club. Yeah, it's been something that we've been waiting to share for quite a while now, because we've been working on it for many months. And it's, it's awesome because it introduces rain, introduces snow, but it's not just the fact it's on or off, it's dynamic. So you can start a race being dry, transitions to full-on thunderstorm before then drying up by the end of the race. And it's not just the visuals of how amazing it looks with the reflections on the cars, the water droplets on the windscreen with the wipers brushing it off, but it's how it affects gameplay as well. Because obviously it's visibility and trying to see where you're going, but the handling is changed as well. So you know, drifting around the corner in a wet tarmac is going to be a completely different experience to do that in the dry. How challenging is it to design the gameplay around all these different weather types? Does it, I mean, does it multiply? Like, okay, there are four different weather types. We need to design four different handling models. Or, I mean, how much effort do you guys put into that? Well, you'd think it'd be a huge amount of effort, but it's actually one of these things because we build everything from the ground up, you know, with the handling model in particular to be very realistic underneath that you don't actually need to do much. We just change the surface characteristics and the handling model just deals with it just like real cars do in real, in real world life. Cool. So let's uh, let's talk a little bit. I mean, you were talking about uh, the rain and uh, all the different other other weather effects, and they look amazing based on what we've seen in trailers and everything. Um, how are you guys making this game? We got some got some footage here that you can watch while we're doing this. Is this? Are, are we watching live gameplay right here? We're currently playing a single player. This is just one of the tour races inside the game, and this is in Chile. I think Carl's driving in a Ferrari F12 right now. Um, just uh, flying around one of the tracks. It's an offline demo, so you're missing some of the really cool features that we're showing off on the booth today. For example, what would normally happen you're racing through here right now, you get things like face-offs. So you'd have dynamic challenges placed inside the world. So whether that's uh, try and beat a high drift score or try and get the best average um, speed, there's always something to do in Drive Club. So it doesn't really matter if you're, you know, you're first or last. You're earn always earning and rewarding uh, things inside the game. Oh, man, this game looks so good. I'm looking at the dash cam here. And first of all, the light reflecting accurately off of the player's hands, depending on the angle it's coming in. The reflections on the windshield. How are you guys? You guys are wizards, right? That's the only explanation here. How are you doing this? Uh, I don't think, no, we're not wizards, but we do have some mightily obsessive uh, <laughs> artists and encoders um, inside the office who just want to make sure everything's replicated like in real world. You know, they want to make sure the cars, you know, from the, from the screw to the, the fiber weave of the carbon, you know, is completely accurate. And then we've got our, you know, colders who just want to make sure the lighting refracts and reflects through windows accurately, just like in real world. Because we're trying to make sure that looks, you know, feels truly authentic. But obviously, you know, we talk about this and simulating the visuals, simulating the audio, but it's not that sort of racer. You know, it's a fun pick up and play arcade sort of accessible game. It's still got all that depth and detail underneath. We want to make sure that it's a racer for everyone. Now, speaking of your meticulous attention to detail at Evolution Studios, uh, I heard some pretty crazy stories about how you recorded the audio for each car in the game. Can you walk us through that process? Yeah, I mean, we're very fortunate. All the manufacturers have just been amazing so far. They've allowed us to get hold of their cars, take them down to our test track, where they're, they're driven to, to their limit. I mean, we've had you know, cars being at 200 miles an hour plus. And some of our audio designers have been very scared by this experience because they were driving alongside them. But what we do, we mic up all the cars inside and out. Uh, I think we've got 16, maybe 17 mics, you know, and we want to make sure that, you know, if you're racing from the chase camera, you're hearing the audio that we captured from outside the car. And if you're racing inside the car, you're listening to a completely different set of audio files from inside the car. So it's a completely different experience. You know, we put them on the dyno as well, and occasionally we get to take them on the road as well and do some more recordings. But yeah, it's, it's all about making sure that we get the characteristics and the, the essence of every car, because every car is unique in the real world. I mean, we're lucky enough to try them out. It's not just you know, how they look and how they sound, but it's also how they feel as well. So you know, getting to drive some of them really gives us the opportunity to go, okay, you know, despite the fact, say, you've got the Ferrari 458 and the Ferrari F12, same manufacturer, completely different cars. You really have to try and experience them all to make sure that you, you capture just how they feel and make sure that you know, every car has a good reason to drive it or something that might suit your sort of um, driving style. Now, talking about how the cars feel, uh, let's talk about some of the different control methods in the game. You've got, obviously, you can play by, you know, uh, just, you know, using the sticks to steer. But what, what else have we got? 
Well, yeah, and DualShock 4, we've not only got, obviously, analog and D-pad steering, but we've actually got motion control as well. Mm -hmm. So you can switch it on, and it allows you to kind of steer it, you know, just like a steering wheel, but you can actually put it in your lap and just lean to the left and right, and that'll steer as well. I actually played with the motion controls uh, when we had a, a hands-on event recently, and uh, it feels surprisingly good. I'm usually not really a motion controls kind of guy, but I found that especially when you're in cockpit view, yeah. when you can see your hands on the wheel, That's the thing. seeing that one-to-one -one representation, yeah. it really like makes you're it feels good. connected to that steering wheel, doesn't it, almost? Yeah. Yeah, it's a great way to play. But we've also got um, steering wheel support, of course. Mm. Uh, we're working with Thrustmaster right now, and today E3 we've announced a new wheel, the T300, which is the best wheel on yeah, the Yeah, we've got it so actually far. playable right over here, so if you're at the show, check it out. Yeah, I mean, you can come along and either play the um, club play, four versus four online on the pad, or you can try out, if you queue it for a second time, <laughs> you can go on the wheel as well. Yeah, cool. So let's talk about some of the locations in the game. You've got a bunch of different locations all look and play very differently. Can you yeah. walk me through just a couple of your favorites? Yeah, well, let's have a quick look at what's on screen right now. We've got, uh, oh, this is India. Uh, this is, I think, a track called Nilgiri Hills. So this is a, a long, I think, 10-kilometer point-to-point sort of stage. And, you know, India's about the kind of vibrancy of color and density of vegetation. And that's so different to, say, the likes of Norway, which is covered in snow, or Scotland, which is quite barren, really, but, but you know, quite gray as well. And then you've got Chile, which is all about the heat and uh, the mountainous vistas that you've got. And then Canada, which just has thousands of, well, millions of trees actually populated. And you've got like, uh, well, what we're trying to do with all the tracks is make sure we kind of, again, we, we visit them, we get the reference data, and we try to make sure we capture the essence of each of these locations. So the corners and the types of bumps uh, are completely different for every location that you, you play within. So you, you truly feel like, yeah, if you've been to these locations in real life, this actually feels like I'm driving in, in India, for example. Now, one more thing I want to touch on before I let you go is the time, the passage of time system. You can start, you can start uh, uh, any race and drive club uh, at any time of the day, and then you can actually speed it up. How does all that work? Yeah, that's right. So what you can do as a player, you can actually choose any time of day. So that's midnight, noon, nine o'clock, doesn't really matter. And then you can choose how quickly it actually transitions as well. So you might say, I want it to transition at real time. So a minute is a minute. I mean, you have to play the game for a long time to see a lot of change, but it happens. But then you can change it to 15, 30, 60. And if you set it to 60, for example, every minute an hour goes by in the game. So that's rapid. So in the case of uh, you know, 6 to 12 minutes, you've gone through a full night to day cycle. It's extremely rapid. And it's the same with the weather as well. You can choose you know, whether it starts dry, whether it ends wet, or whether you want to transition back and forth between the two as you race. So we try to make sure all these, all these uh, gameplay features aren't just gimmicks, they're tools that the player can actually change for themselves. And one of the cool things about it, of course, is that you can set, all, set this race up and then send it, on, send it on as a challenge to someone else, and they get to play the same experience that you set up. Fantastic. Well, that's Drive Club. Uh, thank you so much, uh, Rushi, for taking the time to chat with us. No problem. Uh, let's take a look at some more Drive Club footage, and then we're going to have The Evil Within. Stay tuned. The club. To our ancient simian relatives, it was a coveted, high-tech piece of kit, a symbol of enlightenment, and pretty handy when it came to challenges between tribesmen. Snap forward 20,000 years, and we're embracing this part of our DNA for Drive Club. It's an immersive new driving experience all about fast cars, lively challenges, and teamwork, where you gain more by racing together with clubs. Racing is no longer just a battleground for the most competitive and skilled drivers. This time, we're inviting everybody along to enjoy the ride. It's a driving philosophy made not of wood, but of awesome. And we want everyone to join in. You choose who you play with. Join your friends or enlist your own team. Then play together to build a strong reputation. Your legacy starts when you define your club name and choose your colors, logo and liveries. But it's how you play that will ensure your club becomes a force to be recognized and reckoned with in any starting lineup. The way you play is up to you. Whether you're all about playing hard or playing fair, nailing the apex or drifting sideways, you can do what you want. And the best part is that the rest of your club is always there to back you up. Everything they do directly helps you. And everything you do helps them to achieve more. Achieving goals means earning accolades to build your reputation. Complete races, beat rivals, don't crash, slipstream, overtake, power slide, tour the world, or finish a challenge. Every tire shredding moment contributes to achieving an accolade, which will see your fame multiplier skyrocket. 
the more members you have in your club, the quicker you'll get to those accolades. And because club accolades are shared, everyone benefits. As with our old primitive friends and their nifty clubs, many hands made light work of the competition. That's revolution in a hairpin. Drive club. Drive together. PlayStation.